How's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Baking World Tour. Today, we're making Armenian Jingalo huts. Anyway, as always, I'm sure I butchered pronunciation, but what they are are unleavened flatbreads filled with herbs. This is something very unique I never tried before. They may contain even up to 20 different kinds of herbs. And which ones you use is totally up to you. So let's get to it and see what we need. For the dough, we'll need some strong white bread flour, some water, wholemeal flour, salt and a bit of oil. As it's an unleavened dough, we don't need any baking powder or yeast or anything like that. Now onto the filling. We got some herbs and some seasonings. Salt, pepper, paprika, some chili flake, a little bit of oil, a bit of lemon juice to make it nice and tart. As I said in Armenia, they may use up to 20 different herbs. But what I got here is the regular supermarket stuff. We got some parsley, spring onions, a little bit of dill and some chopped spinach. And you do need quite a lot because it's going to compress down. Sorrel would be quite a common herb to use in this. So I'm going to use the lemon juice to kind of mimic the flavor of it. But of course the options here are endless. Now here's the equipment that we need. We'll need a bowl, scales, a dough scraper and a rolling pin. And for cooking them, I'm going to use my panini press that I never use, but they could also be cooked on a griddle. This works really well because it cooks it on both sides at once. But if you don't have a griddle or a panini thing, use a pan. So with that out of the way, let's start making our dough. Grab a bowl, add the water, the salt, follow that with the oil and wholemeal flour, and then give it all a good mix. Now most recipes that I've seen only use white flour, but just a little bit of wholemeal goes a long way when it comes to flavor. Of course you could make this with just white flour if you wanted to. Once everything's mixed up well, add the final ingredient, the white flour. And now grab your scraper and mix it to a dough. Mix it in a bowl until there's no more dry flour. And if the scraper's not doing the job, continue on by hand. And once it's one cohesive piece, they put out on the table, we can start kneading. This is a low hydration dough, so a regular kneading method will work here. Press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand, and using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, and turn it and repeat. You want to keep kneading this for around 5 minutes, it doesn't take a long time at all. And once it's nice and smooth, we can divide it straight away. There's no need to wait for anything. This is a very very simple recipe. So grab your scales and your scraper, and I would suggest using your scales. It's easy enough to divide the dough in two, just by eyeballing it, but when you're making 6 pieces, 8 or 10, it's quite difficult to get them all the same size. So it's always best to weigh your dough, and then your balls will all be the same size. Now after dividing, we need to pre-shape them. Take a dough piece, flatten it out, then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle, to the reach point where it started. And then flip it upside down, so the smooth side is pointing up, and tighten it against the table. And whenever you're rolling your dough like this, try to keep contact between the table and your fingertips at all times. Now pick your dough ball up, Pinch the seam together at the bottom, and if you got the first one right, the other five might fix themselves up. Place them on a plate or on a tray, cover them with cling film, and pop them in the fridge. We need to let these chill out for around one hour. During this time, the gluten will relax and make it easier for us to roll out the dough. Now make the filling just before you're ready to roll. If you mix this too far in advance, it'll get soggy and watery. It is actually common to mix the filling in batches as you need it. But I've found that if I work quick enough, and I only make 6 breads, then I can mix it all at once. But be aware of that. The longer it sits, the more water you will get. It's because the herbs are obviously full of water, and when you add salt to them, it draws out the water. So the best way of doing this is mix all the other ingredients before adding the herbs. Kind of like making a salad dressing. This basically is a bread full of salad. And if you have a larger bowl, use a larger bowl. This was way too small. I just ended up making a big mess, but I don't have a larger bowl, so it is what it is, I guess. But let's clean it up using some editing magic. Now oh, that's better. You know, I could eat this as it is. It's delicious. So as soon as you made your filling, grab the dough out of the fridge. And of course, it's very important to have your pan or your panini machine preheated before you even start. So grab a dough bowl, have some flour ready and a rolling pin. We need to roll these out until they're nice and flat. 
and don't use too much flour to begin with. It's easier to add some than to take it off. Start by flattening the dough out by hand, only then continue on with a rolling pin. Don't worry about having it in a perfect circle, that's not important. Simply roll it out until it's nice and thin. Around 2mm is just about right for this. Now you could also roll out the edge so it's a little bit thinner. Now grab the filling and add a good handful of it. This bread can take a lot of filling, the herbs really compress down. And I could have easily added more, I just didn't have enough for the 6 breads then. Now we need to seal it all in. Grab opposite ends of the dough and connect them together in the middle. There is also a stitching method that can be used, when you start from one end and stitch the dough cross it over in the middle. But I had not made these before so I didn't feel confident using that. This was quite a lot easier I think. So press it all together but don't smash it because it's got air inside it and you don't want it to explode. And now simply roll it out the size so it fits your pan or your panini machine and roll it gently and gradually. Because there's air inside it, bubbles will be forming around the edge and they may pop. So just be careful and take your time. You can make the first ones thicker, they don't have to be paper thin. And once you get more confident, roll them thinner and thinner. I'm just gonna roll it until it fits my panini press. Now when it comes to cooking, all the recipes I've seen, they don't use any fat or oil or anything like that. It's mostly cooked on a hot, dry griddle or on a pan. But I think a little brushing of oil or butter wouldn't hurt. The cooking time will depend on the equipment that you use. It took me around 5 minutes. And that's how simple and easy it is to make. Armenian Jingalo Hats. Thin and crispy dough wrapped around a delicious filling. I mean, you could probably call this bread healthy. And when it comes to herbs, the customization options are endless. You could put whatever inside these. So what do you think of these breads? Have you tried this before? Have you heard of it? What's your favorite unleavened flatbread? Do let me know down in comments. And if you have any questions or suggestions, also let me know. And if you love baking, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the bell. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.